All right, so today I am going to tackle the, really the only other thing I don't like about this machine, uh, other than the PCB, which I don't have the replacement for yet, and that is the flipper buttons. These are just arcade buttons, and they don't particularly feel like expensive arcade buttons. So I'm going to replace them with what would qualify as a normal flipper button. I got these off of... She cannot see them. They can't see these? No, put them right down. Put them down. Now, no. doing... now can you see them? Mm, no. Hmm. Cindy's helping me with this video. Say hi, Cindy. Hi. Oh, this needs to go down? Okay, where, oops. Now you can see. Well, this is way too high, isn't it? All right, how about now? Yeah, now, now. Now they can see them? Yeah. Okay. All right. Because the normal pinball machine has reed switches, um, which I believe is still the technical term for these, but maybe not. So I got these from, I think it's virtual pin cabinets or something. They're designed for virtual pinball machines, and I think these are going to feel a lot better than what we've got in there. I'll put the link to where I got those in the comments. So, first, we got to take the back box off. Can you see the screwdriver, Cindy? Yeah. And you can see the screw I'm taking out? Good. So now we're going to take off these wing nuts. Can you see my feet? I don't know. You'll have to tell me. Can I see your feet? Yeah. Okay. I can see me. I can see me, Dad. You can see you? Wow. You can see your face? Oh. Yeah, and this. Oh, cool. All right, so I got those four removed. So now we got to unclip these wires. Which it feels like this clip on the back is what you need to push down, more so than the sides. You can't. Well, do I need to go up or down? Down. Down. Like that? No, she still can't see it. You no. still can't see it. Yeah, move back. Well, if I move back, I can't reach them. Move back. Move a little bit back. Okay, moving back is not an option. I can tilt my head up or down. That's pretty much it. Down. Look in the phone. Don't look at the camera. Can you see my hands? Yeah. Okay, then you can see. All right, so the back is what you have to do to get those. So now that I've got those three disconnected, I can lift that right up and off. All right, now I didn't get my Allen wrench set. Okay, so it looks like it's the 3.30 seconds we need. Here, you, you said you wanted to help me, right? All right, so you give me the phone, and I'm gonna give you, that's called an Allen wrench. So now, we need to take out these three, and then there's three more on the other side. Okay, I'm going to get So. Yep. I'm going to take this part out, okay? Okay. This way or that way? Alright, so. 
for screws, the saying is righty tighty lefty loosey. So just so we don't want to scratch it up. So we're going to turn this counterclockwise. Yep. All right, so now that we've got our six screws out using our, what did I say, 332nds Allen wrench. All right, so now, we should be able to just lift this straight up. Well, the front comes up, the back doesn't want to. I'm guessing I need to pull this up. Oh, I'm trying to lift up on the fiber board instead of just the plastic. All right, Cindy, don't. Touch it with your feet, please. There we go. All right, so. All right, so now's the hard part because there's a couple of wires that are really short. Yeah. They're not that short. It's only two. I mean, there's only one. All right. So it's plenty long enough to just set it up like this. No, I wouldn't say plenty, I guess. All right, so now, disconnect that one. Disconnect this one. So anyway, once you get this wire disconnected, and yeah, it's keyed, so you don't need to worry about putting it on wrong. Once you get this wire disconnected, you can go ahead and just set this pretty much anywhere you want. Uh, th this cable here is long enough. I'm going to try to see if I can get that thing disconnected with this little screwdriver. Now like I said at the beginning, which I may or may not have actually even cut out of the video, uh, this is the original PCB. I'm still waiting for my turn. I opted for the what is it, 1.3? I don't even remember if it's called the version 3 or the version 1.3 at this point. But I do have confidence that I will get it, whatever it is. As opposed to when I made my first video, when I said, eh, I waste $10 all the time. And there's tons of videos all over the internet about replacing this PCB from those who got the 1.2 instead of waiting for the 1.3. So anyway, yeah, tiny little screwdriver popped in there. Just be careful. You can feel with the screwdriver where this first break is because if you end up putting it down too low and you try separating the header board from the PCB, then you're in deep doo-doo. But anyway, 
Bright on the right, blue on the left. Looking at it from the cabinet. Because you gotta make sure you put it on there the correct way. And of course, anytime you disconnect the cable, it's always a great idea to take a picture of it with your phone first. So that way you don't have any questions. So now I do believe I can take this completely off. Yep. And technically I could have just left it up here and not even bothered disconnecting it. Alrighty. So these are the buttons I'm going to replace. They're just arcade buttons. And are these? Oh. These got clips on them. Well, that's going to make my job a lot easier. Assuming I can get them off. You don't need to worry about which is which because switches are just closing contacts. There is no A or B or hot or cold, neutral, uh, anything like that. Now let's see if these new buttons will fit. It'll be awesome if they do and it will really suck if they don't. And whether or not I'll even be able to notice a difference once I do this, I don't know. But, I mean, this from day one, it's just the feeling of the buttons has bugged me. All right, these are larger than the holes. Well, that ain't good. Okay, so unfortunately, uh, the only sandpaper I could find here was ultra fine, which isn't really much good for anything like this. Uh, my Dremel would have this done in like half a second, but it's at home. And I want to get as much of this done tonight as possible because I got work to do tomorrow. Fortunately, uh, this fiber board is only one step up from paper mache in terms of hardness and durability. So you can just take a box cutter and basically just whittle away at it. You can see I'm not, I'm not really getting a whole lot on each rotation, but I am almost to the point where it can go through. So if you have a Dremel, use that to make the hole just a tiny bit bigger. Uh, otherwise, just use a box cutter. And I've actually been working on this for probably about five minutes now. I mean, two go-arounds with a box cutter isn't gonna make it this big, but I'm almost there. So, I'm going to give it a couple more turns, and then this should fit in there fine. And then I can worry about the sizing issue, because when I first tried to put it in there, it looked like the size was not going to work out the way I wanted it to. So, I'm going to get this finished off so we can fit it in there first, and then I'll be back. Okay, so I was not able to find uh, my Dremel, which happens more often than I care to admit. So I was able to get the uh, drum sanding bit, which is just this little dude right here. 
Uh, you can buy this separately for like five bucks on Amazon. Probably if you just go down to your local hardware store, you'll be able to find one. And I just put that inside my drill. And all you do is just run it around in there a couple of times. 30 seconds later, you'll be done. Now for the actual buttons themselves, when you're, well, back up. When you're making this bigger, you want to check on a regular basis. Let's see if you can even see what I'm talking about here. Because you don't want them too loose. If you can see, the button still has some wiggle in it. Can you see? Yeah. You see how the button is wiggling? The reason it's wiggling is because the button has two little wings on it. Now the purpose of that is so that once you get it in tight, the button doesn't just spin around, which if it didn't have those wings, it would just spin around. So make sure you don't get it so loose that those wings have nothing to bite into. You can buy two different sizes of buttons, one in an eighth inch or one in, I think, three quarters inch. I bought the big ones because I had a bunch of these little ones laying around and I didn't know which size I needed. So the one in the eighth inch is the correct size. That's the one that I'll put inside the description for what you want to buy. So we just put that in there. It still wiggles around because of those wings. Then we put the leaf switch on it. And the nut. These are all separate pieces that you have to buy. And you just tighten it up. And as you tighten it, those wings will cut in to the side and it'll be super tight I'm actually going to have to get a wrench, I think, for this one. Let's see if my new nose pliers are big enough for that. There. That's not going anywhere. So now the button's nice and tight. It's not going to spin around. The length is absolutely perfect. And that's one of the, I mean, you'll, as soon as you put it in, you'll be able to tell there's a world of difference between these two buttons. And the thing that bothered me the most about the machine, on a normal pinball machine, regardless of whether it's using the leaf switches or the new infrared switches, contact or the circuit is closed, you know, a quarter to a halfway in typically where with the buttons that came with the machine, contact isn't made until it's pushed all the way in. So just doing that, the buttons are going to get triggered a lot earlier than they were with the original buttons, which will help make the gameplay a lot more realistic. So, these quick connects are too small to fit on these. So all you do is you just take your small um, straight edge screwdriver, the same one you use to disconnect this cable up here. And just put that in there. Wiggle it around. And now it is a perfect fit. So you don't even have to do any soldering. This is actually a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. And all these extra pieces that I thought I might need. Didn't need a single one. We're done. So, yeah. Um, everything you need I'll put in the description for the video. It's super, 
simple, easy to do. Hardest part is making the holes a little bigger. If you've got a rotary sander, a Dremel, something like that, you'll be done with that part in a minute tops. If you decide to use a box cutter to just whittle away to make it larger, it'll take you maybe five minutes and then you'll be done. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up and then start putting it back together. Okay, well I don't have my assistant here today, so putting it back together is gonna to be a little harder than it was taking it apart. I'm assuming I can still manage though. I know not everyone has a little helper to help them. For a long time I was having to do everything by myself and it always bugged me when someone said, make sure you get someone to help you. I'm like, well, I don't have anyone that's going to help me. I got to do it myself. So, I got this on there. Definitely need at least enough room for my hands to get in there. All right, so this cable here goes in there. That's going to be easy. Let's see where the... Oh, that's over there. All right. So, actually, if I just hold it here with my body, remember, red's on the right. Gotta have it down a little lower. Not from that angle, that ain't gonna work. Okay, that works good. I've actually got it sitting down, if you can see it. Um, the bottom corner is right on the corner where it belongs. And I'm holding it up on this corner. And got that done. And that done. All right, that was a lot easier than I was afraid it was gonna be. Now I am gonna move it just so I can check. That's what I was afraid of. See how I'm missing, I mean, I'm missing a row and a column. So that's why you always want to check what you do, because it may seem quick and easy. So take this back off. Feels good, let's check. Because as Billy Crystal used to say, it's better to look good than to feel good. Yep, it looks good too. down nice and tight that's good all right now we are ready to put our screws back in and then put the back box back on 
I violated the first rule of actually doing anything. When I took this apart, I did not have a zip lock bag handy. So we did not put all these screws directly into the Ziploc bags like we should have. So if this is your first time ever doing anything, always have a Ziploc bag because the screws will try to run away from you and they will succeed in hiding. putting all the screws in not tightening any of them up don't tighten up any screws until they're all in a couple all right well I get to go hunt for the screws that I lost because I didn't have a ziplock bag with me Now you notice I'm going to, where did I put my baggie? I'm going to put these uh, wing nuts in first before I connect the cable. So just in case something happens and this slides or we have an earthquake or something, it doesn't end up breaking all those cables. All right, so I got all the nuts back in there. So now we just hook these up. These are keyed. They'll only go in one way. Different sizes. So they did make this part very, very easy. Of course, this was part of the initial setup anyway. Making sure that you get everything plugged into the right spots. So that's why that's super simple. This really is a nice little machine and uh, the community is really good, even though it is only on Facebook. If they'd have come out with the new chipset on their initial launch instead of the chipset they did come out with, they probably would have had a slam dunk right off the bat. Alright, so now it's time to put it back in place and plug it in.